Welcome to episode 319 of Geek Town Radio. I'm your host Dave and I'm on my own this week. The reason for that is because it was MCM Comic Con over the weekend down in London and uh, in all honesty I've forgotten quite how exhausting doing three days of MCM Comic Con could be so I just haven't had time to put together a full podcast it's going to be a little different this week. A couple of new stories. I'll do some upcoming air dates, but most of the show this week is going to be interviews which were done at MCM Comic Con. We'll kick off with a few bits of the news which have popped up this week. Just a few headlines. Happy Valley has been renewed for a third and final season, which is due to film in 2022. Whether it will come out in 2022, I'm not sure, but it's filming. So if you're a fan of Happy Valley, that is back for a third and final season on the BBC. Sir Trevor MacDonald has been announced as the new face of the Games Master in the E4 slash YouTube Games Master reboot. So if you want to know more about that, that story is up on the website. And Mythic Quest, the brilliant, wonderful Apple TV Plus series, that has been renewed not only for season three, but also for season four. So that will be coming back for two more seasons, which I'm over the moon about, because if you've not watched Mythic Quest, it is utterly hilarious and uh, just beautiful. If you like things like The Good Place, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, or Brooklyn Nine-Nine, any of those sort of really top-notch comedies that are also a little bit off the wall, Mythic Quest is definitely something I would urge you to go and find on Apple TV+. Plus. So those are the bits of news. On to the main thing, which was MCM Comic Con, which was over the weekend down in London. It's the first time I've been back to an event in two years. Just wonderful being back amongst people at MCM. I really thoroughly enjoyed spending three days down there. It was a little bit quiet on the Friday. People were sort of finding their feet again, I think, of getting back into going to the con. Saturday, even though it was at about apparently 60% capacity because obviously they had to reduce capacity because of COVID. It still felt very, very much like MCM and like everything was back to normal. And uh, it was really nice being able to go out and meet people. They were brilliant with the COVID checking. They were making sure that everybody either was vaccinated or had done a lateral flow test before they went in. So if you're thinking of going to MCM in Birmingham, which is on the 13th and 14th of November at the NEC, and you're worried about that, they seem to have a really good handle on all the uh, COVID checking and stuff. Hopefully that will be the same for Birmingham, but they seem to have done really well with that. So if you're thinking of going to MCM Birmingham and you were worried about the COVID stuff, they do seem to be handling it really well. In terms of the stuff that I saw down there, I do want to give a shout out to my lovely friend, Martin, who uh, we've interviewed before on the podcasts, Martin Gooch, who is a wonderful film director. He makes these really interesting, weird, off-the-wall little movies. He has got a new one out, which came out of a sort of lockdown project. It's called Arg and the Quest for the Golden Dragon Skull. It's beautifully strange. It's very Python-esque. It was filmed in his flat using miniatures, like Citadel miniatures, and then superimposing people's faces over the top of them. It's really odd, but very, very Martin. If you want to know more about that and see a trailer for it, he had a panel down at MCM, which was really good fun. It was lovely meeting him and a bunch of the uh, actors were down there as well. But you can go to martingooch.com, that's G-O-O-C-H.com, and click on the ARG link and you can go and check out the trailer for that over there. Of course, it's MCM, so a lot of the other things I'm sure you'll be interested in are some of the bigger panels. They had a bunch of people from Loki there. They had a bunch of people from the Daredevil TV show there, as well as a lovely group of other actors and people from MCU and other TV shows. So I've put together a few different interviews and bits and pieces to put out on the podcast this week. 
We're going to kick off with a clip from the Loki panel. If you've gone and looked at the YouTube, which is, of course, youtube.com forward slash Geek Town, there are a bunch of little clips for the Loki panel. I haven't actually been able to put the entire panel up, which is what I would normally do. I'd usually go in, film the whole thing and upload it. The reason for that is because Readpop, who are the people that own MCM, are now selling virtual live stream tickets, which cover not only the MCM Comic Cons, but also Emerald City Comic Con and New York Comic Con as well. They're selling live stream tickets for £45 each, which gives you virtual panel access. They actually are recording all the panels themselves, all those big panels. So um, I entirely understand they obviously don't want us uploading the entire panel up for free because that is not really fair to the people that have bought live stream tickets. They're actually £45 for the virtual panel access, which you can go and get off either the MCM site or the findthemetaverse.com site. You can go and find them there as well. Tickets start from 45 quid for the virtual panel access, and that doesn't only give you MCM. It also gives you New York Comic Con and the Emerald City Comic Con panels as well and across the ReadPop events. But what I have taken out is a little clip from the Loki panel, which was with Tom Hiddleston, Sophia De Martino and Jonathan Majors. This was a little clip of uh, Tom Hiddleston talking about his favourite Loki moments. If you want to go and see the other clips from the Loki panel, you can go over to YouTube for more. There's a hilarious clip of the cast just completely trolling the audience by avoiding revealing anything about the second season, which was just great. But go and find that over on youtube.com forward slash Geek Town. This is Tom, though, talking about his favourite Loki moments moments. I don't know that I could pick a favourite moment of playing a character. I've definitely had moments which have become cornerstones for the characterization. Um, I can name a few. One was in the very first Thor movie directed by Kent Branagh when Loki found out the truth of his lineage for the first time, the scene I played with Anthony Hopkins. Uh, it was a pleasure to play that scene and became a emotional anchor for the character. I remember standing on Stark Tower and staring out at the destruction of New York and playing a scene with Robert Downey Jr. in Avengers. That felt was very memorable. Get help in Ragnarok is... <laughs> it comes around a lot. Um, and, and obviously that moment in Infinity War. But there's, recently there were just so many moments in, in Loki with Sophia and with Jonathan and everybody in the cast with Owen Wilson. Yeah. Um, absent friend here today. I'm sure he would love to be here. And uh, yeah, I'm particularly surreal in episode five of Loki standing in a room with and every other cast member, and there were about 25, was dressed as Loki. <laughs> this is, his job has changed from what he's doing. Um, yeah, many memorable moments. So along with the Loki cast, there was also a couple of people from the cast of Daredevil there, Charlie Cox and Deborah Ann Wall. They were great, really entertaining, lovely, lovely to see then. Again, I can't put the whole panel up, but I have got a little clip, which is kind of what I think probably most of you are most interested in, which is Charlie talking about the possibility of him showing up in other MCU projects. There's been a lot of talk about the possibility of a Daredevil TV show or whether he'll show up in Spider-Man. Obviously, he can't confirm anything and he will deny it to the ends of the earth because that's what all the MCU people have to do, regardless of whether it's true or not. So the way he answered this was, if it happened, what a new series of Daredevil might look like if it was added onto Disney Plus as a Disney Plus show. So here's Charlie talking about that. The funny thing, you know, you can't say anything. And also, the, all, all of the, the guys I've met this weekend, no one's actually asked me. They just said, I know. <laughs> so I'm like, fine. Oh, good, then great. That's okay. It's everything. It's like, okay. Yeah. Like, you know, look, a lot of time has passed. So God knows if anything can happen for us in the future. I really don't know. And obviously, if something were to happen, that would be thrilling. But because enough time has passed, I imagine it would have to be a, a kind of reimagining. Assuming they, they choose to use us, yes. it would be an interesting scenario because it would be a, a reimagining, but with the same foundation. Do you know what I mean? So I don't know what it would look like. I know that there's so many great storylines to tell. We never really got into the bullseye stuff. 
there's an unfinished history with Karen that we got to almost get there in season two. Nelson Murdoch. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. That is the future. That, there's, there's a lot of stuff that we'd like to, loose ends we'd like to tie up. But having said all of that, I'm really proud of what we did. And we ended on a high. And I'd rather that than just because there is a huge fan base to run it into the ground and end up kind of, you know, like when you make, we made 60 plus hours. And at some point, you start to run out of ideas. Everyone does. And what you don't want to do is, is suddenly end up with a, a fourth bad season that didn't really work and too much time passed. And everyone's like, Charlie Cox is in his 60s now. Why is he playing? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So sometimes I do. I get out of bed. I'm like, is that the bed or is that my bones making this? The next interview is with Mark Rowley. This is a longer interview. It's about 10, 15 minutes. And Mark Rowley plays Finnan on The Last Kingdom, which is due to have its final season either later this year or early next year. But uh, we did this panel on Saturday. And then on Sunday on a panel on stage, they announced that although this is the final season, they are making a Last Kingdom film as well to wrap up things from the books. So uh, that's awesome news there's going to be more Last Kingdom coming as well. Along with appearing in The Last Kingdom as Finnan, Mark also has appeared in things such as The Spanish Princess. He was in Luther, Young Dracula, Guns Akimbo, that wonderfully bonkers movie with uh, Daniel Radcliffe has guns stuck to his hands. And uh, he also voiced Alexander Graham Bell in Assassin's Creed Syndicate as well. So uh, there's a number of things that gets covered in this interview. It was a roundtable thing, so it's not me asking the questions. There are a bunch of different people asking questions in here. Here's the interview with Mark Rowley from The Last Kingdom. What are the challenges of filming, you know, like a, a period drama set in a, in a very specific sort of time frame? What are the challenges for you as an actor? Um, I, I would say... <laughs> As an actor and a human being, <laughs> um, sometimes the costumes can be a bit restrictive. Yeah. So, like, um, having to go to the toilet can sometimes be a bit, bit of an issue. <laughs> I don't think we have to specify much further. <laughs> I'm sure lots of knights and, you know, warriors in the battlefield had that problem as well. <laughs> um, yeah, pro- probably the main one. Practicalities. <laughs> what about things like fighting? You know, is it, I mean, obviously you have stunt people, you know, part of the show, but is it is it quite a physical role? Uh, yes, yeah, it's very, very physical. Um, and it's really fun. And the great thing is, it's pretend. <laughs> so after it, you're like, oh my God, this is so exciting and brilliant. Wow, this is what it must have been like. Yeah, but we have plastic swords. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And all the people that you're fighting are like stunt guys. So when you do tap them with a the sword, they'll go down. <laughs> it's not... So, um, but you do get a flavour of it. And after it, you do... the adrenaline rush is unbelievable. And what people kind of forget is, and actually when you're in the madness of it, and there's so many people, especially dressed in similar costumes, you are looking out for the stunt guys you practice with. But all the Vikings look the same when they're in the armour. So it's very much like, oh my God, everyone's just running at me. Who am I going? I'm, I'm going to go for you. So then, so then there's been a couple of times when I've attacked the wrong guy and then I've ruined the whole battle. I'm like, oh my God, because you're supposed to fight him. Then he fights Alex. And then, um, yeah. but, Hi, right. So, what was your experience like getting to work on set of Luthor? Oh, that was many, many years ago now. Brilliant. Um, it was really exciting. Um, yeah, I got horrifically beaten up. And that, I think for, I think for a, a while at the start of my career, I was a, a victim. <laughs> <laughs> How the tables have turned. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was interesting as well. And then when it first came out, and I think a lot of actors get this as well, if, you, if your character's been killed or something traumatic has happened to them. Um, everyone's mothers and fathers watch it. And it's like, oh my God, they get so upset. My mum was like, my wee boy, oh my God, they killed you. And I'm like, mum, I'm alive, I'm here. Yeah. It's like, it's fake. But I think because they see it with their eyes, it just is so impactful, you know? But it was great working in that set. And that was the first time I'd seen an actor who was, who, to, to keep in the zone and, yeah, yeah to keep in the zone 
and be prepared for the scene. He would listen to music. And actually, so many actors do that. But he had massive uh, cancellation headphones, even back then. And he was just in his own world. Where as a young guy, I'm like, hi, I'm Mark. It's like, <laughs> mm, leave me alone, turn the music off. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, with Last Kingdom coming to an end, um, what are the things that you will uh, miss about the show? And what are the things that you, other than the costumes, obviously, uh, that you really won't miss about the show? Um, I suppose all my friends. Uh, I think this is the. Um, I mean, in other shows, I've definitely, you know, um, made new acquaintances and friends for sure. But in this show, like everyone is my is my pal. Like we all have a WhatsApp group. We all keep in touch. We've been quality with each other. Uh, so I think that's what I'll miss knowing that I wouldn't get to see them as much mm. um, so yeah I wasn't even talked about you know occasions of hey maybe we should have like a thing where we meet up every couple of years you know like some yeah. sort of convention for ourselves <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah that's <laughs> yeah totally uh, things I won't miss um, I think sometimes being away from home because because you're away from home so much, you do miss a lot of events, you know, family events and um, being with your loved ones. So maybe maybe that, you know, because uh, it's so hard to just go back for a couple of days, especially as we were filming over COVID there, we're very much there for yeah. the entirety of the shoot, you know. Um, so that was quite tough, but I won't, I won't miss that as much. Cool, thanks. Um, so what's been your favourite moment working on Last Kingdom? Favourite moment? Um, <laughs> yes, I, I think I've said this before, but there was a time when me and Arnest, they played Citric, uh, I think it was season three, and it was either episode four, it was episode four and five, um, and there was a big battle, and we all charge out from the forest, and we're all surrounded, and we were running out of time in, in the day, and so all the cameras were set up, and... Um, we thought the lens that they were using on one of the cameras in particular was very tight. So if you go for a tight shot and someone's slashing about, like there could be, you could be fighting air <laughs> and they wouldn't even realise that, you know, no one's there or whatever because it's so tight and close and it feels almost claustrophobic. So you can sell it, you know? Um, but it wasn't like a, it wasn't a close up on Honest myself. It was a wide shot. <laughs> so by the time we finished the fight and they were just like, keep going, keep going. We're like, okay, all the stunt guys have kind of died. <laughs> we were just pretending <laughs> to like fight people. And then they had the, the, um, the additional artists there, you know, the extras, they were there, supporting artists. And so then we started interacting with them. And they didn't know what to do. So as soon as like we were slashing them with the plastic swords, they, they just all died and didn't fight back. So if you ended up watching it back, poor guy who's editing it together. Um, because just we you just seen all these Vikings just sacrifice themselves. It would just be ridiculous. So I'd say that was good. We didn't get fired, you though, so that was nice. Surprise. Do you know in the last kingdom, were there any new skills that you had to learn? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, horse riding. I had to do an Irish accent, and that was really fun. Um, and I said to all my Irish friends as well, <clears throat> you know, if, if I, at some point you can hear them Scottish, then I'll have to buy a pint. <laughs> so I made sure that my accent was in top form. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, probably probably that. Yep. Um. So if you if you could appear in another um, Assassin's Creed game as a historical figure, who would it be and why? Oh, that is very interesting. Um, hmm. Historical figure, maybe like someone like Napoleon. That'd be quite cool. I mean, he was a bit of an interesting character, you know. Yeah, someone like that. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to be on my knees. <laughs> he definitely had small man syndrome, you know, taking over the world and all that. But he done all right. Feels <laughs> of that, you know, forced him to force his masculinity to the to the edge, to the extreme. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe someone like that. Um, yeah, I quite I quite liked an Alexander playing Alexander uh, Graham Bell. I think that was quite a cool character to play. He was a cool character. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard to pick something. He was like te the the Tesla back in the day. <laughs> You know, creating everything. Um, yeah. I was going to ask, 
what do you think is the continued appeal of you know a Viking story? You know, this is this is you know it's deep into kind of antiquity, but you know it's it's they're still used in, in kind of film and TV and books. What do you think? What is it still about? You know, the idea of, of the Vikings that still appeals to a modern audience. I think it's because they are steeped in nature. You know, um, it's that idea of you could be taken at any minute. Yes. So people celebrate life even more. And I think that's what I appreciated with the, the show itself. And just thinking about that, because we have so many distractions, you know, our phones and everything just around us now. So it's kind of like we forget to be what it's like to be human. But back then, you did have harsh winters. Um, it was about community spirit. Uh, similar beliefs, clan systems, you know, um, identity was everything. And you were only as powerful as the next man, you know. Um, so I do, I do think it's to do with that, the core of what human society really was. And I feel as if we are missing that more and more each day as we delve into the world of internet, and, you know. And everyone's talking about, you know, uh, microchips in our head. <laughs> Five G. Five G. Yeah. So, so I, I would say it's that. Very rarely, I think. Even I even realised that, you know, a couple of months ago when I was walking around a uh, nice park, I was like, oh, I'm listening to music. I was like, ah, oh, wow, you'd never get that back in the day. And then I took my headphones. My, actually, my headphones died. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, it's so nice to hear the, tr the wind through the trees. So just to appreciate nature and just to kind of be there and make sure your phone is off. And totally. Like very just walking around. And 100% and present. Yes. It's like, whoa. Yes. So, yeah, maybe maybe it's that. That's cool. what it felt like for me. Thank you. One more question. Is there any scenes or role that you got to play that you spent back on and just thought, wow, I couldn't believe I got to do that? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm doing a project just now and it's kind of like that. But there's... Um, I'd say I played Macbeth when I was when I was younger. I was like twenty five, and that was quite cool, especially to do it so young. Um, so yeah, very much that really. Um, yeah, it's just a great part to play. And normally you kind of get cast as Macbeth when you're your mid thirties. So it was, it was really really exciting to do that so young. So the last interview is an exclusive. You'll only find this on the podcast. I got a 10-minute one-on-one with the lovely Gabrielle Luna. Gabrielle Luna, you will probably know from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., where he played Robbie Reyes or Ghost Rider. He's also been in things like Terminator, Dark Fate, and he is currently filming The Last of Us TV series from HBO, where he plays Tommy opposite Pedro Pascal as Joel and Bella Ramsey as Ellie. We obviously talk about Ghost Rider and Robbie Reyes and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We go into a bit about uh, the work on The Last of Us as well and production on that show. So here's the exclusive interview with Gabrielle Luna. I hope you enjoy this. I will see you afterwards with some highlights for next week on TV. <laughs> Thanks for spending a little bit of time to talk to me. Of course. How, how are you finding MCM Comic Con? So far, I've loved it. It's uh, it's my uh, third Comic Con in England. Wow. Uh, we did Blackpool, Birmingham, and finally got to come to London. And uh, I, I, it's just my maybe fourth or fifth time in London. I love this town. And uh, it's just good. It's good to be back with the people because, you know, they're the great source of energy. And, and uh, I've, I've missed it. I, I really have. Yeah, so coming out to do this, no problems getting over here with COVID and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no, no problems at all. You know, my girl, she's uh, she's really good about always getting us prepped for when we're traveling and stuff. You know, she looked up the regulations on the website, knew what we had to do. And of course, the MCM, the, the folks here are really great. They made it pretty seamless. Vaccinated and feeling good. And, and so it's pretty easy to get over here. But um, I came about three days early, just sort of wanted to see some, see some shows and visit some friends. And I've had such a wonderful time thus far and look forward to the rest the weekend yeah awesome two projects you're involved with which are agents of shield obviously and last of us which is the new thing that you're doing yes agents of shield what are the fans most interested in when they're coming up to talk to you with a mixture of both or is it other things as well yes i think you know the ghost rider was a, is a, was a huge fan favorite and then uh huge favorite of mine and so uh yeah I, I would say that there's a lot of engagement you know i just saw a kid wearing a robbie reyes jacket ghost rider <laughs> jacket and i was like there you go if you don't win best dress then i don't know who i don't know who's judging these things but you're 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 number one in my book but yeah so far it's uh 
you know, the love that they have for that character is is only equaled by mine, you know. And so we get to just be together and nerd out over his story and Robbie's, you know, his his developments in the latest iterations in the in the publishing department, Marvel Comics. So there's just been a lot of really new stories with him involved with a lot of the main, you know, a lot of the, the other main characters. He's an Avenger now, so we're all very proud of that. But yes, yes, uh, yeah, a lot of Terminator fans as well. And yeah, yeah. and then I look forward to us premiering The Last of Us so people can, uh, you know, really absorb that story, which is a beautiful story. And, and most people have experienced it first person, you know, playing the game. And uh, but I love that we're doing the show because it's a, it's an awesome story and we're really happy to make it more accessible for people who perhaps aren't aren't gamers, you know. So there's plenty of room for everyone under that Last of Us tent. Yeah, I mean, Last of Us, uh, incredible team behind the camera and in front of the camera. I mean, you know, you've got some great people involved in that show. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, where are you in production with that? Is it done have you, or have you got more stuff to do with that? Oh, we're, we're still in production. You're absolutely right. You know, I was joking uh, on stage here on the, on the main stage for the panel that we had assembled the HBO Avengers to do this show. <laughs> yeah. Because we have uh, Carolyn Strauss, our EP, who is an executive producer on Game of Thrones, and uh, Craig Mazin, of course, won an Emmy for Chernobyl. And he's 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 penning every word of our our order. And then, of course, we got Neil Druckmann, the creator of the game, who's who's completely interwoven in our process. He's he's so involved, and we're so thankful to have him as, as such a great resource of inspiration and creativity. And uh, yeah, the team is phenomenal. The cast is great. I fell in love with everybody so far. I was already a huge, huge fan of, of, you know, Pedro and I have a lot of mutual friends. We just had never crossed paths. And now here we are playing brothers and, and we came together like peas in a pod, man. It was, it was pretty, pretty seamless. And Bella, I'm just a, I'm just a massive Lady Mormont fan. So <laughs> Lady Mormont of Bear Island is absolutely top of the list and my favorite Game of Thrones character. So now it's just to, just to spend some time. And she's a young woman now. She's not the little girl that we saw on screen. So happy for her to get this opportunity because they couldn't have picked a better actor. She's just, uh, she's really extraordinary. But yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great team and, and we got a long way to go, but we think that people will be pleased with the, with the outcome. Yeah, I think having people involved that were involved in the game, involved in the show is amazing. And Craig writing it, I mean, Chernobyl was a phenomenal series. Oh. And yeah, Lady Mormont kicked ass. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, it can't go wrong, man. Yeah, Craig is, Craig blows my mind with his, uh, his ability, how prolific he is and his you know his the way he can get the voice of these characters and, and then just to just just the amount the sheer amount of work that he's doing is uh just so impressive but yeah we're in good hands with him and and you know we need we need only be true to the page for it to be a pretty extraordinary show so uh, i'm not not concerned at all i just think that we just need to execute as we know we can and it'll be great I mean, it's a very well beloved game, which obviously a lot of people know that story. So how much are they tweaking it? I know you can't get into specifics, but how much are they tweaking it for the show? Is it, does it run a similar path or are you kind of? Well, we, I think we want to, we want to give, I think we want to keep the essence of the story true to what it was. Because as we said, there's a lot of people who perhaps haven't played the games and we want there to be a, uh, a purity to, to what they're receiving as, new, as, as newcomers to the, to the story. And then, of course, but of course, you want to you want to you want to expand it in a way that, that keeps it interesting for us who have played the games and who, have you know, who have been just have, have had our hearts ripped out by, by playing these. Yeah. You know, and just just to, but maybe there are a few pieces of your heart that were still remained in there, you know, so we're, we're going to go get those pieces, too, and rip them out. That's our that's that's our goal. We'll see if we succeed, but I think hopefully we will. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to seeing it. It looks like it's going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal show. So. Yeah. In terms of the Ghost Rider stuff, obviously you've got um, some other MCU people kicking around the, uh, oh, yeah, the... Yeah, Have you had a chance to kind of chat to any of the other guys that are here? Yeah, you know, that's the fun thing about these things. You get to kind of... Uh, you know, one of my best friends in the MCU is, is Benny Benedict Wong, who played uh, Wong in Doctor oh, yeah. Strange. And uh, we met at one of these things and became fast friends. So, you know, I look forward to, to meeting some other folks. Jonathan is a phenomenal actor. And I, and I uh, yeah, it's going to be nice to spend some time with him. And I have met Tom. And, oh, actually, you know what? I met Tom briefly at the uh, Endgame or the Infinity War premiere. Yeah. I believe. And so, yeah, we met briefly then. and But that's always fun. You know, when we come together as a family, the, it truly is. The, the Marvel family is just that. And, and when you come together at these premieres and these events like this, you know, it's just um, you feel the strength in numbers, so to speak. You know, you just you feel uh, a sense of pride to be a representative of all that. And um, and so when you come together and you have these interests, it's like in the comic books, like when you see your favorite characters yeah. come together and you, you see the synergy there, you know, it, it exists also with amongst us as just the as just the players, you know. So, so yeah, I look forward to meeting them both. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah. 
would you like to return to the role of Ghost I know this is probably a silly question, but would you like to return to the role of Ghost Rider? Because in the sort of MCU universe, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was slightly outside because it was a separate bit of sure. it. So would you like to see that all folded in and yeah. turn up in a, one of the maybe Disney Plus TV show or something? Yeah, you know, it's um, they always said that just that, that it was kind of uh, adjacent, like an adjacent story. But I mean, with Sam Jackson in season one, and of course, yeah. Jamie comes on as Lady Sith, and then you got various different characters that were in the films that ended up being a part. We we introduced the visual language of the portals, the dimensional portals that right, you see yeah. in Doctor Strange was introduced with us yeah. on Agents of Shield in preparation for Doctor Strange before the original film came out. So, so to me, it's it's it seems to be much more connected than most people want to say. But I guess now that we have the multiverse opening up well, yeah. with what it's had with the events of Loki, I mean. There's absolutely zero reason why none of this can't all exist at once. I personally love the character and would be honored to take my seat in the Hell Charge and continue continue my uh, telling of Robbie's story. But I'm also more so just uh, more so I, I just want the legacy of the character to continue because I think we brought a lot of great attention to Robbie Reyes as, as his own character. And I think there's a whole generation of kids that see Robbie Reyes as the Ghost Rider. Yeah. And I think we the, they deserve and the character deserves for that legacy to continue and for, for there to be great stories told about him and his experiences. So whether that's me or someone else, who knows? I, uh, but I, I just uh, it's more so the legacy of the character that I want to continue. Awesome. In terms of the other areas of the MCU, have you been watching the shows? Is there anyone that you particularly love? Oh, man, I mean... Bearing in mind that Tom Hiddleston is here. (laughs) So they're so unique, you know, and like, uh, I mean, Loki was phenomenal. I just love the colors and the production design on that show is phenomenal. I love the TV, the way that what they do with the TVA and the kind of the retro lo-fi kind of look to all of that you know i love owen i know some of his family from back in texas and <laughs> me and his older brother future man have spent some time at barton springs in austin texas uh partaking in a few left-handed cigarettes and having a good time <laughs> take a dip in the water and uh you know so i always love seeing that family and rowan do his thing so i love loki obviously yeah wandavision was wonderful they've done a good job it's really seamless the way that the, the stories are getting interwoven i look forward to uh what's the next one on the slate oh uh Hawkeye. that's right that's right christmas yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah looking Which- forward to that that trailer blew me away because it's like it's a Christmas like oh, series. Yeah, it's yeah, just what a wonderful idea. You're getting some Home Alone, Die Hard vibes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So yeah, I love all of that. I think yeah. they're doing a great job with that. I look forward to the yeah. I'm I'm there, man. Whenever the films come out, and, you know, they yeah, I've been thankful enough to be able to uh, come and partake in in a lot of these films and be there when when they're eventually shared with the world and and uh, yeah, I I am a fan. Count me among the rest of these beautiful fans here because because uh beautiful modern myths that we get to take part in get to be a part of and get to enjoy so i i'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan we've also got some daredevil people here this weekend and uh you know there's a lot of stories about them kind yeah, of Charlie, maybe you know, Charlie here. Is deborah here as well here. oh shoot i gotta see her I, i'm a friend of deborah and her husband ej okay is she here today I, no i think they're here tomorrow i i did her husband's podcast and went to their house a couple of times we met and we became good buddies oh, awesome. love her what a what an amazing person yeah. just just, just as a person, she's really a wonder. And then, as of course, as an actor and performer, she's excellent. So, yeah, look forward to seeing her. Yeah, yeah, Daredevil. Wow, all that was great. Awesome. Well, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you for spending a little bit of time. Awesome. Good to see you, Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. So, highlights for next week on TV. We have AP Bio returning for its fourth season. That is on Sky Comedy on the 2nd of November at 10pm. We have The L Word, Generation Q, also returning for its second season. That is on Sky Atlantic on the 3rd of November at 10.05 We have a new show called The Premise, which is an anthology series from BJ Novak that is landing on Star on Disney Plus. That's on the 3rd of November. Station 19 returns for season five on Sky Witness on the 3rd of November at 10 p.m. That will be followed by Grey's Anatomy next week. But Station 19 kicks things off the first part of a two part thing this week. Family Guy season 20, that lands on the 3rd of November on Star on Disney Plus that's moved from ITV2 it will now be exclusively on Star on Disney Plus The 100 season 7 looks like now Channel 4 seems to have sorted out their channels and 4 Music is back up and running it looks like The 100 season 7 is going to land on the 5th of November at 9pm we hope that sticks but 
but that is what is currently in the schedule. I pray it's there this time. We'll see. But uh, that's the 100 season seven on four music, 5th of November at 9 p.m. Hopefully that stays. Big Mouth season five, that starts on the 5th of November on Netflix, along with Narcos Mexico. The third and final season of that is also on the 5th of November. That's also on Netflix. And Dickinson season three, the final season of that is on the 5th of November. That's over on Apple TV+. Plus. And lastly, we have Dexter, New Blood, the return of your favourite serial killer. He will be back on Sky Atlantic. That's on the 8th of November at 10.05. That is going to be landing on Sky Atlantic. I can't wait for that to come back. I love Dexter. That's going to be brilliant. So that's Dexter, New Blood, season nine, technically. That is uh, 8th of November at 10.05 on Sky Atlantic. And that's everything I have for you this week. We should be back to a normal show next week. Of course, in the meantime, if you want to go and uh, find other people involved on the show, you can go and find Bex. She's over on twitch.tv forward slash Trista Bites. She is live streaming daily. She actually wasn't at MCM this weekend. She was up at Play Expo in Blackpool and uh, seems to have done an amazing job hosting panels up there. So uh, that's twitch.tv forward slash Trista Bites. That's B-Y-T-E-S. Go and check her out over there. She's brilliant. Lots of fun stuff going on over there. For Matt, you can go and find him at entertainmenttalk.org for lots of other podcasts including The Walking Dead which uh, he's doing Fear the Walking Dead and we're both doing The Walking Dead well beyond so go and find that there and Daryl you can go and find at hollywoodnorthnews.net for all those TV series that you love which are shot in Canada for us you can go to the website at geektown.co.uk throughout the week and see all the latest air date information if you want to get in touch with your questions and comments email us on podcast at geektown.co.uk leave a message on the website post find us at geek town on twitter or on facebook at facebook.com forward slash geek town on youtube at youtube.com forward slash geek town or on instagram at geek town uk lots and lots of cosplay photos going up on instagram right now that is everything we shall see you next week bye bye <laughs>